Good evening, small groups. I hope you've had a great week. It's good to be together again as we continue our small group sessions on the Vision Series. Uh, I really hope that Sunday was a blessing to you. This week, we've been looking at this idea of the vision is Jesus. In fact, the vision has always been Jesus. Uh, you know, I like to say actually that like there is no vision aside from Jesus. Every vision we have uh, for church, for our future is subsequent to having our vision full of Jesus. And uh, I, I love Psalm 84. Obviously, this, this passage is integral to uh, the dream that God gave me. But just even verse one and two tee us up nicely. The psalmist says, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. You can hear that this guy is obsessed with the, the physical location of the, the temple of Jerusalem. He says, my soul yearns, it even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. And the reason I love those two verses is because there's almost like this dichotomy, or this partnership is probably a better word, of this obsession with the courts of the Lord that's ultimately undergirded with a, with a heart and flesh that cry out for the living God. And really the big message on Sunday was that it's, it's kind of possible to love the church and not know Christ, right? But it's impossible to love Christ and not love the church. You see, we're not called to being in a relationship with the church. You know, we're not called to be in relationship with the gathering, with the community, or with the, the potential of the church. We're called to be in a relationship with Jesus. We're called to be in love with Jesus and have our vision absolutely full with who Jesus is. And on Sunday, we looked at a few passages that we're going to explore a little bit together tonight. Uh, we looked at Saul's encounter of Jesus. We looked at Peter's moment with Jesus on the waves. And, and, and really the, the big idea was just this, is that like, if we want to see the church reach its full potential, if we really want to see the glorious church rise and take its place in this generation, then the only way to do that is to build a community of people who are passionate about Jesus, who love Jesus. In my dream, really, uh, that was undeniably the, the undergirding factor. <laughs> you know, my dream, it, it wasn't about the fancy worship. It wasn't about the preaching. It wasn't even about the building. It was simply about a passion and obsession for the person of Jesus. And so tonight, I really want us to think about how, how do we, as the people of God, get a vision full of who Jesus is? Because if anything else in our vi is in our vision, or if anything else is our vision, then the chances are we're setting ourselves up for a fall. Because, you know, if we're in love with the church, there will be times where the church lets us down. If we're in love with ministers of the word, like we're obsessed with preachers, there will be times where the preachers let us down. You know, so, so really it's about, I guess, safeguarding our future by saying, listen, the church is brilliant and we should be yearning and fainting for the courts of the Lord. But first and foremost, it's our heart and our flesh crying out for the living God that takes precedence and priority and is our driving force for the things to come. At Paul Campus on Sunday, I showed, showed a video that I want you to see now about this young girl who uh, up until this point could only see in part. She had very limited vision. And this is a beautiful moment where a doctor comes and gives her prescription lenses to suit her eyes. And uh, as she sees for the first time, you see her reaction to seeing her mom's face. Check this out. Yeah. <laughs> Lani, Lani, put them on. Look, look at mommy. Look at mommy. <gasps> <Ooh>. <laughs> look at <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> wow. Lani, look at me. Can you see? It looks cute. Dad, Dad, she looks like bubbles off of the uh, trailer park, boys. Yeah. Show Lani. 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 Honey, look at Regan. Oh, what can you see? Lani. Look at Regan. Are you what happened? <laughs> can you see? Can you see? Can you see? Those, those are her mom's words. Can you see? And those are the que that's the question I really want to leave you tonight as you start this conversation is, can you see? Because the key to seeing is actually having a vision of Jesus. And so I encourage you tonight, 
enjoy the conversation that you share with one another. Bring your questions, you know. The, the, the brilliant thing about small groups is not that it's just got one host or one leader who has all the answers, but it's together we have the mind of Christ. It says we converse with one another, dialogue with one another, share our stories of God at work in our life, share our understanding of scriptures as we share those factors and, and things that actually we come to a greater revelation of who Jesus is. And my prayer ultimately as a church is that as Jesus is the center, as Jesus takes the focal point of everything we're building and everything we're becoming, that actually the glory of the church would increase too. Because it's possible to love the church and not love Christ, but it's impossible to love Christ and not love the church. Have a great evening together. Thank you.